Hi friends, welcome to my kitchen. I wanted to come to you today to do a video. Um, today is Valentine's Day, so what I did is I decided to make a little cake for my hubby for Valentine's Day, but I'm actually going to use a quick cooker recipe. So those of you who are familiar with the quick cooker, you know it's a pressure cooker, and so it's right here. And you think about cooking meats and veggies and side dishes and rice and potatoes, but you don't necessarily think of cooking dessert in a pressure cooker. Well, that's what we're doing today. So I'm going to be doing a simple bunt cake or what we call in the Pamper Chef world, fluted cake um, recipe in the pan that is made for the quick cooker. So this is the quick cooker fluted pan as opposed to our regular full-size one which has the blue um, exterior coating. This one is, however, in addition to the quick cooker, you can also use this in a regular oven as well. So you don't just have to use it in the quick cooker. And what I'm going to do is just mix the ingredients together really quickly. I'm using the four cup size of our um, stainless steel mixing bowl set. And if you look on the bottom, you can see there is a black nylon um, around the bottom and that just helps keep your bowl in place. It also has the little finger hole so you can hold it while you're mixing and the best part to me which is the pour spout so you can easily pour your batter into your bowl or your pan. So what I want to start with first is I just want to grease my my fluted cake pan and when you have any kind of cookware, bakeware, stoneware, you don't ever want to use a cooking spray on that. It's very bad for your, your bakeware, your cookware. You always want to just grease it with oil. So what I'm doing is I'm just simply taking a tablespoon of oil, drizzling it inside, taking our silicone basting brush, and just literally brushing it along the bottom and up the sides, kind of like a paintbrush. So we're going to get that nice and coated and you will see if you use a cooking spray over time you might get what they call hot spots on your cookware or bakeware and you don't want that because that weakens the performance so it doesn't work as well. I also made sure to coat the bunt part of this pan with the oil as well so that's done. Now for this size pan obviously this is much smaller than a traditional cake mix would be and I'm I'm not cooking from scratch I'm baking from a boxed cake mix so I simply have a red velvet cake mix I figured red for Valentine's Day so what the recipe that comes with this pan calls for is one and a half cups dry cake mix so I've just divided it only simply because I wanted to show you these really cute measuring cups they do come as a set they're stackable, they also lock in place for storage, and they come with the leveling tool as well. So they are clear, and the markings for your measurements are right on the top, so you can easily see it. So that's, actually that's a three-quarter cup, I didn't realize it should have been a one cup, but that's okay. So we have one and a half cups. So I'm just going to scoop a tiny bit more because I didn't realize I was using the half the three-quarter cup instead of the full cup so we have that and then I took our two tablespoons of oil with our adjustable measuring spoon so that's dirty I don't want to flip it up too much to show you but it's very easy to use and I'll actually show you the teaspoon one you just take and press it up or down to the measurement that you want you pour in your liquid and you pour it into your recipe so very simple to use so we have two tablespoons of oil, and then we have one egg. And what I always do with my egg is I always like to crack it separately into a separate bowl because then I can see if any shells got behind. Sometimes when I crack eggs, the shell goes in with the egg and we don't want that. So I'm just cracking it into our one cup prep bowl. These are super cool. They're great for reheating. They're great if you make homemade jello or pudding, put it in the refrigerator. They're great as a one cup measuring cup. They are one cup capacity. They come as a set of six and they also come with lids for storage, reheat, for, for freezing and um, putting in the refrigerator, but you don't want to use the lid for reheating. You can get these in a set of six for the one cup. And then they, we also sell a two cup size and a three cup size. So I'm just going to crack the egg right into the bowl here. Alrighty, so we don't see any shells. I'm going to pour that in. And then finally, 
we just need a half cup of water. And what I'm putting the water in is another one of my favorite measuring cups. This is our easy read measuring cup, and you can see that it is slanted. I love this slant because I don't have to worry about getting down at eye level to look at the measurement that I need. It's right there for me, and it's printed in black, so it's easy to see. These are also microwave safe, so if you need to heat liquid or melt butter, you can absolutely do it in these. So these come as a set of three. So we have our half cup of water, and I'm simply going to take our silicone mix and scraper and I really love these because they're like a spoon and a spatula in one. They're so easy to use and because they're silicone that makes them also non-stick. So you could totally do, you could be stirring your spaghetti sauce with this and it's not going to stick to your, your um, silicone spoon. It's also heat safe. It will not crack or break and you're going to see when I'm done here with the um, Mixing the cake batter, you're going to see that I it easily comes off the side there and it's not going to stick or stain. So I'm just going to pour my batter right into the bowl here. And I'm actually going to just kind of pour it around the side here and let it let it kind of fill in as it levels out. So we'll get that all scraped out and then I'm just going to kind of spread it around now it's not going to be full and that's good you don't want it to be full in your pan because obviously it's going to rise while it's baking so we'll do that get it all kind of level just eyeball it so you can see I have it all filled in there okay now this tool And I just wanted to see, this tool comes with your quick cooker um, fluted cake pan. So you'll only use this tool if you're using it in the quick cooker. If you're using it in a regular oven, you don't need to use the quick cooker. You don't need to use this, okay? So you want to use it about um, two-thirds full. We're going to place the fluted cake pan on the wire rack on the countertop, and you're going to see going to go right through the top so you're actually going to be able to pick it up that way so you can see that okay and then we're going to load it into what's called the inner pot and I just removed that from inside our cooking vessel this is called the inner pot and it simply looks like a stock pot but this is where everything happens so this is where if you're cooking a, a dish a regular dish you'll put your water or your liquid right in here but I'm just going to leave that in there and I'm going to lower my cake right into the inner pot okay alrighty and then we're going to set pressure too high and adjust time to 25 minutes so we're going to put our lid on now let me show you before I put the lid on so you can see a couple things here I don't know if you can see it too well on the video but there's a little red button here that's the button that really makes things happen. With that red button, that's going to work as it's building pressure and as it's cooking. And then also here, there's a little, it looks, it's a picture of a hat. So what you want that to be is up and flush with the handle because you know then it's going to do what it's supposed to do. So that's going to make your um, quick cooker get steam and work the way it's supposed to. Okay. Now you probably couldn't hear that again also on the video, but it did make a little beeping sound and that's what you want it to do because you know it's working. So if I kind of tip it here and show you, hopefully you can see, there's four blue dash lines going across the front and there's a symbol of what looks like the quick cooker on it and also a lock symbol. So that tells me that everything is where it should be. It's going to, um, it's, it's set up properly, it's ready to go. So now there's a bunch of settings on the front here. So we have, for up at the top here in blue, we have sear, steam, slow cook, and proof. And then underneath we have white rice, brown rice, whole grains, chicken and poultry, beef and pork, fish, seafood, soup, stock, beans, stew, chili, and dessert. Okay, so what we're going to do, and I'm just going to turn it back here so I can 
read it a little better. We're just going to turn the knob. And as you turn the knob, it goes to one of those settings I just mentioned. And there are preset settings in there already. So we're going to turn it to the last one, which is dessert. Now, it automatically has a, has a preset of 40 minutes for dessert. But we want to change that because we want to make it 25. So we're just going to press the time button and the minus symbol until we get down to 25. Okay, and we want to make sure our pressure is at high. It looks like it is. And then we just simply press the button and let it start. Now you heard that three little beeps. That simply means, okay, it's ready to do something. Now again, I'm going to turn it to the side here to show you. It's kind of making little um, dashed lines that are moving back and forth. That means it's getting ready to do its thing. So I'm going to come back here in about 25 minutes and show you the finished product. I can't wait to see it. See you soon.